Today we're in Berlin and I'm here to talk about the Comet IEMs from Campfire Audio in Portland. So, what's in the box? Let's have a look. Inside here are the IEMs themselves. I've taken these out before, but I wanted to show you something because I think it's very cool and it's, it really shows the attention to detail that Campfire pay to these and that each earpiece arrives in a little sort of drawstring bag to protect it. So in here is the earpiece. I think that's really neat. So this is a nice lined, it's almost like a baby sheep. It's a nice soft line pouch for protecting the IEMs in travel. So these are Campfire's, probably their most distinctive IEMs to date. Uh, they're made of stainless steel using a process that Ken Ball, the designer, calls drop forging. And they're quite a small IEM, but they're very solid. They're, you know, they're, they're solidly built. And the stainless steel makes them, makes the inner chambers less resonant, so they, with the idea that they sound better. They're a long way from the cheap IEMs that are literally pouring out of China at the moment. This is a very, very high quality product with a real luxury feel and look. So inside this um, stainless steel earpiece, is only a single balanced armature driver, which in and of itself isn't really that special. But what is, is what Ken Ball, the designer, has done to that driver. He's applied a vent to it so that it fires into what he calls his tuned acoustic ex expansion chamber, TAEC. And that extends the frequency response, or the effective frequency response, of the driver inside here, so we get better treble extension, better bass extension, which is really quite interesting. So because I use these earphones whilst traveling around Berlin, they spend a lot of time in my ears, but also in my pocket. So I shove them in my pocket like this, and when they come out again, they have the potential to be quite tangled, but luckily, Campfire have um, specified a cable, which is mostly, actually, fairly tangle-free. There's only a couple of times that I've got it into a real mess. On those occasions, I've made use of the detachable MMC X connectors that come off like that. And then I untangle them and then pop them back in like that. Simple. So being out and about in Berlin with these Campfire Audio Comet IMs, I make use of its inline microphone. So you've got play pause in the middle and also um, answer call, end call, and then volume up and volume down and also the 90 degree headphone jack and use it with my LG V30 smartphone which runs Spotify, SoundCloud, Tidal, Kobuz. It really talks to the price point at which these earphones come in at, 200 bucks. It's really not, not aiming at the, the really sort of anal retentive audio file or head fire. The pragmatist choice of earphone you can make phone calls and listen to music. So these earphones are slightly thirstier than the average balanced armature IEM. They really ask the V30 phone to push volume pretty much close to the top end here. So we might think that because these are heavier than average IEMs, they'll, they fall out of the ears really easily, but they really don't. I mean, they fit in very nicely. So you can see this IEM rests in this part of the ear here, which is, I believe, called the intertragic notch. And they're very stable. So you can see this is one of Campfire's earlier shell designs. It's quite a bit bigger than the Comet, and therefore the Comet fits into the ear much more easily than this Orion does. And what I really like about the Comet is that it kind of captures the sort of sonic finesse and purity of the Orion but takes it to the next level with a better extension up top and down below. We get none of the Orion's bass and treble roll-off. And that's because, I assume, 
Ken Ball has juiced this one with his expansion chamber. So for me, the Comet is the clear winner in terms of fluidity and dynamics. And they contrast the Orion as being drier and more incisive and probably a little bit more skeletal. Uh, the Comet is fatter in the mid-range. And at times, I swear I was listening to a hybrid. It's really that good. So what's really surprising about these single balanced armature IEMs is the amount of bass you get. It's a lot more propulsive than say the JH Audio Rosie with zero bass boost applied. So it's a, a really, as intended, a very punchy listen. Surprising. However, if you want really big bass, I still think a dynamic driver IEM is a better choice. That's for really big bass. Back in the box, we have a little sort of instruction manual. And then in this bottom layer, I've already bust open the spin fit ear tips. But you can see there's a whole range of ear tips in here, including the stock ones, which I took off. These are what the, uh, the Comet arrived with, but I took them off and went with spin fit. But there's more. There's another set here, more like foam ear tips. You might find that you get a better fit with those. I personally do not, I prefer the spin fit. But that's the thing, isn't it? You have to choose what works best for you. And yet more ear tips and a cleaning brush and a campfire audio pin and a warranty card. So I use the extra large spin fit tip on these IEMs. This gives me the, the best fit possible for me. Okay, so you can see here we have the, the JH Audio Rosie IEM. They're a lot, it's a lot bigger ear shell than the campfire. But it's amazing how the campfire have this kind of full of fat, squidgier, like, like a rubber bouncing ball kind of bass sound. Whereas the JH Audios may sound a little bit bigger, but it's, a, it's more uptight, it's more rigid. Okay, so we have to be careful though, because it isn't just the earphone itself that makes the campfire for me, sound better than the JH Audio. It's the fit. That's partially the reason why I get a better bass response from this earphone, is because it fits better in my ear. Just, it's smaller, I can push it further in. This one's more of an issue. So fit is just as important as the quality of the drivers, how they're implemented, the crossover. So what I like about what Ken Ball has done with the voicing of these IEMs is he's given them a, just a little bit of a tickle in the upper mid-range to make those guitars really kind of like sear through. Not too much, just the right amount. So that extra bit of upper mid-range energy also translates nicely to this uh, podcast from Nathan Fake to give it an extra bit of spice when listening, especially to the the squiggly 303 lines that kick in halfway. It's a very exciting listen through these earphones. Really cool. But a bit of extra presence region push never really hurt anybody. And especially with these, they're not fatiguing, they don't wear you out, you can listen for a long time, and that's especially important for a, an earphone like this that is positioned as a long game earphone. So maybe for three months, or maybe you're gonna have them for a year or two years or several decades, or maybe a couple of hundred years like this building that's been standing behind me. This is a long game earphone. With a length of, I don't know, what I was gonna say. Maybe for as long as this building has been standing behind me. Although isn't this building a rebuild after the war? 